Fathers Who Bother is made possible in part by the contributions of listeners like you. To support Fathers Who Bother, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash fathers who bother and become a monthly subscriber today. On the next episode of Fathers Who Bother, I speak with R&B sensation Eric Roberson about raising his three boys, what songwriting has taught him about parenting, and why his kids are his first A&Rs. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fathers Who Bother, a podcast for men who are dad as we want to be. My next guest is a Grammy Award-nominated singer, songwriter, and producer who has been blessing us with soul music since 2001. He established himself as a go-to source of love and grooves thanks to releases like Esoteric, The Vault 1.5, Left, When Love Calls, and his Soul Village Music Showcase. He continued to shine a light on indie soul with releases like Mr. Nice Guy, The Box, The Earth, Wind and Fire Trilogy, Tigalero with our previous guest, Fonte Coleman, and 2020's Here From Here. He is also a professor at the legendary Berklee College of Music in Boston, where he currently teaches songwriting and the business of music. But today we are going to talk about his role as husband and father to three wonderful boys. Please welcome Eric Roberson to the podcast. Of course, of course. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, we spoke for the Urban Daily back in, I want to say, 2013. Mm. Um, we, we, we were doing a, a 10 year anniversary or celebration of the Soul Village series. Mm. Wow. And wow. We were talking about all those those songs. And, you know, I think you had, um, had just dropped the N1. <laughs> flu freestyle the N- <laughs> n1h1 freestyle oh, wow, yes. yeah 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 so i'm a i'm a i'm a long time fan um so i appreciate you taking the time oh, and wow. um I, I i had i had you in mind but then I, I hopped in on the um clubhouse call you had recently and i was reminded i said i gotta hit up um, Eric and I reached out to Sweet Locks and I was like, I need to have him on the podcast. So I'm glad we were able to make it happen. Yeah. So the funny thing about the clubhouse um, session, you close it out um, with the baby song. Yeah. And I, it had been so long since I had played the album it was on. I think that was from Left. Yeah. I was like, wait, he made a song about his kids. So I hit up Sweet Locks like, yo, what's that song? She said, oh, that song was from way back when I was like, oh, that's right. But I'm listening to it and you are talking about a kid. So who was that song for? While you're sleeping, amazing how you're keeping your eyes close to each and every kid that kid must love karate, my little ninja boo. Yeah, I, I didn't have kids yet. We weren't, me and my wife weren't even married at the time yet. Mm-hmm. It was actually a, a song about my wife's brother, my brother-in-law. Okay. Who was who was expecting his first kid? And, you know, he you know he 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 that cool, chill hip hop dude. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. you don't see him get giddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I remember him coming to the studio. I remember it, and I remember him giddy mm. over like, you know, the baby's kicking. I feel the baby kicking and. And uh, she's making him bacon and eggs in the morning. And like when he smelled, when he, before he go to work, he smelled the bacon and eggs. He know he's loved. Mm. He smelled the bread. He's like, she's putting the effort, you know, you know, and I just remember all that stuff. So I just, the whole song was just documenting everything he said. I just made nice. it rhyme really, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and I, and I gave it to them. They were actually getting married and, uh, and I gave it to them as a wedding gift. Oh wow! The crazy thing was that they didn't know they had a boy or girl, so I had to uh, I had to guess whether it was going to be a boy or girl or not. I guessed girl, and I was wrong. Oh! Um. <laughs> and, and you know what's you know what's crazy? I want to say no, that's not true because her sister, her s- younger sister, had a girl. But outside of that, it's been all boys since that song. My wife got three boys. Right. Um, they they had two another boy. She had two sons, and then her two si- sisters had two boys since then. But it, there's been one girl in, in this situation, so there hasn't <laughs> been one girl. But um, but yeah, I wrote I wrote it really just from about you know just listening to him, mm-hmm. and then eventually, of course, my wife we got married. My wife, my wife was pregnant, and then I I was able to really relate to that feeling and that that, that giddiness and that amazing 
uh, amazing feeling. And of course, I was okay. Maybe that's why I said girl because I was gonna have a girl, mm. and then now we got three boys in here, <laughs> little musty little boys in here. <laughs> it's all good. So, when did your first son come along? Uh, he is ten years old now. So, mm. uh, two two thousand eleven, two thousand eleven. We got we got married two thousand eight, and uh, enjoyed a couple of years. <laughs> you know, yes. of, of being able to sleep late, and then, <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, 2011. Um, my, my little guy, he, uh, my first, my, my, my oldest, Rock. Uh, we call Rock. Him Rock. Well, his name is Rock. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, yeah, he came first, and then Ryder was right after. Boom, boom, it was back to back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What, and so, then, what, and then came Max. And then came Max. So, what do you remember about your wife coming to you, telling you that you that she's pregnant? With Rock, the first time you find out you're gonna have him. Uh, let me see. I I re- it was crazy. I remember. That's crazy. I remember her telling how she told me uh, about Ryder, and I also remember how she told me about Max. I'm trying to remember how she told me. I want to say she woke me up. Mm-hmm. She woke me up to tell me. Uh, I remember being very emotional because we we were having a real hard time um, getting pregnant the first time. I that was real easy, you know. Right. But we 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 reread every book and went to see doctors and did everything we you know leaning to the side of this time. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it was like it was it was yeah. a crazy year right. of like really trying to capitalize on that. So I think it was. I want to say we just went and got a, a pregnancy test and say it, it said it was positive and, and we were jumping around and crying and just uh decided I don't really that's crazy because I remember the other two the other the second one was very much a surprise yeah so she was like woke me up and literally laid the pregnancy test on my chest <laughs> and I was like I was like oh huh? why are you making it so early what is what's this Hey, what, what's this? You know, you know. And the other one, the, the Max, my, my youngest, she told me uh, right when I was going on stage, we had a we had a show. It was right before our um, uh, and it was right after our anniversary, and we had we had anniversary cards. We had went somewhere, so we didn't open them. And I had a show in Philadelphia outside festival, and um, and she said you should open the card before before you go on stage. I'm like. Mm-hmm. I'm about to go. I go with something. She's like, "No, open it now." I was like, "All right, cool. I open it, and there's a picture of a pregnancy test on the car in the card, <laughs> and it's like, really, really, ladies and gentlemen, like, hey, real, what? You know, so, I mean, I, I can't even tell you. Anything. I was out there on stage, like, you know, come see, come see, hi, come here. Uh, so it, you know, it was it was on and popping, but uh, good times, man. Really, really good times. This the, yes. this the this the this the surprise one right here. Hey, what's up? Hey, Max, you say, what, how you are say, you? What's up? What's up? What's up? How, how are you? Good. Good, good. I'm surprised you're not. You know, the whole thing now we just trying to keep them all off the electronics. So I'm oh, he, he's uh he's running around now. I I'll take it. I'll take it. Are you trying to? You want him to go outside, but going outside right now is just a little. Yeah, it's a little. How have you guys been been holding up during the shelter in place? We've been doing good. The kids have, have adjusted pretty well to remote learning. We've been we've been pretty careful. My my wife has multiple sclerosis, and she's doing very well with it. But I, you know, in the, in this climate, she's one of the last people who probably need to like get COVID and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she's actually getting her first shot, vaccination shot tomorrow. No, I just sorry, got mine Saturday. I just got mine today, a couple hours ago. Yep. Congratulations, congratulations! Are you feeling good and everything? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Good, mm-hmm. good. yeah. Um, so hopefully, I'll I'll be getting vaccinated as well. Mm-hmm. But we made adjustments, man. I mean, everything is you know everything is moderation, and we and we figured out. But you know, we figured out how to do certain things different and give, you know, the kids and each other, e- each of ourselves a little bit of grace mm-hmm. you know, with, with us all being on top of each other. <laughs> that is the word. Grace is the word for this yeah, past it's, it's year, man. It's important, man. I mean, I, even with my students and everything, I mean, I've had, I, I got a student right now that got COVID. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, um, you gotta, you just gotta handle all that with, with, with a level of grace. But I'll tell you the one thing is, you know, when all this hit, um, and obviously, you know, I make a 
most of my living on the road, like traveling. Mm -hmm. So for all those shows getting canceled, it was it was it wasn't bad. I mean, I was you know I had some money put aside, and we had like a lot of virtual early stuff that was popping up. So it's some checks coming here and there, mm -hmm. and then we really embraced it. But the the good thing about it was it allowed me time that I would not have had with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, so like last summer, I taught each one of them how to swim. Nice. So now they swim with no life jackets in the pool. Like they they're swimming, swimming now, right? Oh, nice. And um, uh, outside of Max, who's four, uh, the oldest two learn how to ride their bikes. Mm. You know, learn how to ride bikes, and like so, like really, like outside, like we going took one of them out there with his bike, and we just going, we out there, you know, for for a long period of time until he's ready to come in. I go out, and get the next one, we go out, you know. So like that time that. That time that I would have, I'm running up and down the street trying to, you know, uh, get them to trust me, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have been in Dallas somewhere playing, mm -hmm. you know, or Chicago, or, you know what I mean, or London or whatever. So, so you look on the bright side, and at the same time, even though we've we lost some people we knew, mm -hmm. we didn't lose like we're super super close. We didn't, you know, mm -hmm. my parents are fine. My that's good. My father-in-law, who had COVID, he's fine now. Okay. Um, you know, everybody, everybody's for the most part made it through. Uh, even though we know a lot of tough stories for a lot of people, so yeah, you know, we've been we've been very fortunate. Yeah. So the kids have enjoyed having daddy home to themselves for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I I think so. You know, I think they would mind it. You know, having a little, they would love to go to like you know the arcade or something like that. Mm -hmm. But but we've had a lot of time. We had a lot of time. Not not at school like uh, Berkeley's back going on. Mm -hmm. That takes up a a good sub substantial amount of time. But like like this summer we're going we're going to be balling out again. Cause I don't I don't foresee myself necessarily being on the road uh, come this summer. Uh, so you know, really trying to dedicate that time with them and put that time. Just appreciate the time that, that, that you know that you have. And I think they appreciated it. You know what I mean. They, they like they like hanging out with with uh with dad and mom. So <laughs> you know. So how much time was there between Ryder and Rock? You said there was one after the other, but how how far apart are they? Uh, Rock was born in September, and then the following year, uh, Ryder was born in July. I'm sorry, not the following year. So they're a year and a half apart. Okay. So so Ryder is about to turn uh, nine. Okay. Ryder's about to turn nine in July. And and then Rock will turn eleven in September, so they're, they're like a li little little over a year and a half, you know. But we but but we had two we had two kids we had one kid still in diapers when we had another baby. We had okay. two, two car seats in, and at one point when we had Max, we technically had three car seats in the car at the same time. It was like whose idea was this, you know? Some, but it some was people like, do that on purpose, though. I've heard people say, "I just want to knock them out, boom, 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 boom," but. I guess because yeah. they have everything already there, um, as opposed to when you space them out, you got to start all over with the clothes and with the toys and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You baby proof once and then you're done. But you know, like baby proofing goes in levels, right? So you know, oh, I got to start <laughs> over again. Yeah. But um, if, if yeah, if, I mean, truth be told, if I had, if I had my way, I, I wish Max was a little bit closer in age with them. The one tough, mm -hmm. if anything's tough during the pandemic. Is that Rock and Ryder are so close in age, so they have a lot of things in common, mm. and then it's working to fit the four-year-old in with the eight and ten-year-old. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I find I find myself on the floor playing with them more than, and trying to encourage them, you know, because it's more of um, they'll include him, but they'll include him in what they want to do, right? Rather than include him with what he wants to do, they don't get on the floor and play Avengers with him. Right. They might let him play, you know some little arcade game with with them and right. that's fine but every once in a while so but when's the last time you picked up the spider-man doll and on the floor <laughs> right. with him you know what i mean right, I, right. I mean i got my avengers time i <laughs> i got my avengers parent credit <laughs> I, i've earned that this year you know what i mean so uh you said your wife I, had some tough had a yeah, tough she pregnancy. Had real tough real tough pregnancies mm -hmm. uh was sick the entire time i mean my wife was in the hospital about to deliver, deliver the baby and was still throwing up. Oh, wow. So she threw up every day from the time she found out she was pregnant to the day she delivered, sometimes multiple times throughout the whole day. Couldn't hold anything, couldn't hold any wow. food or anything, just miserable. Now, what I'll tell you is I would I would have more kids. I just wouldn't want any more pregnancies. 
Mm. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I, five, six kids. I think. I think we, you know, it'd it be just as crazy. It, 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 it can't be any more crazy than it is right now. Right. Once you once you hit a, a threshold, it's like three, three. What's the difference between yeah. three and five? You three know, five is, <laughs> it sounds crazier, but at the end of the day, I, you know, I, I I wouldn't mind. I mean, I I love kids. I love being around them. I love the challenge, and you know, try my best to to make sure I find some quality time with each one of them. You know what I mean? Uh, which I think if you have more kids, it, it, it will be more be more difficult. But I, I, I ain't getting my wife pregnant no more. Like I, that that uh, I wouldn't want to put it through that no more. I wouldn't want to put myself yeah. through that. <laughs> right, right, yeah. You know I, I, I'm there with you. We we got two, and after the second, we were like, nope, that's it. We're done. Yeah. And um, yeah. it could yeah, the, the pregnancies were, were not as bad, but you know. The deliveries you know she had two c-sections so Ooh. the doctor was like yeah you're you're not having any more right so because in hours yeah. were six years apart so you imagine you have a c-section and then six years later you have another one it, it's, it's kind of hard on the body so Ooh. the doctor was like nope no more so we're yeah like, all right yeah. so I took, okay. <laughs> I took matters into my own hands and said all right we're good we're wow yeah yeah i haven't i haven't done i haven't done that yet but <laughs> <laughs> It's a big decision. It's not one to take. That's a big. That's a big decision. That's, that's a big, not, it's, especially it's, since it's scary you too to me. Were you scared? A little bit nervous. I think nervous is the better. You know, I had a long conversation with the doctor beforehand, and he explained to me what was going to happen. And you know, it's funny enough. There's this cartoon on Netflix called Big Mouth, and they have a whole episode where one of the fathers walks through the whole procedure and what happens with the vasectomy and stuff is really funny but i have no regrets i actually i have yeah, no nah, regrets hey. <laughs> no nah, nah, i got you man Oof. have you would you consider adopting since you want more you know it's funny you said that I, I had a strong passion i think if we had i'll be honest with you if we if we only had one mm -hmm. uh one if we, if we just had rock and that was it mm -hmm. I'm almost positive we would have adopted mm -hmm. by now. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that now that we have three, we have mm -hmm. to kind of take that into account, right. really get a handle on what we have here before we bring someone else in. Yeah. What I would tell you though, that I really feel, I, I probably feel really passionate about is that I think I will at some point in my life take on the responsibility of mm -hmm. another child or another young adult. Mm -hmm. he, and it doesn't have to be like adopting like a three-year-old or something like that. To me, right. there's enough 16-year-old kids out here without parents uh, or in the foster program who could really use some guidance. Um, so how would you describe your parenting style? Man, day-to-day uh, -day survival. But uh, no, I mean... I try to take a little bit of the things I've learned. I'm very close to my parents. Mm. They did an amazing job with me and my sister. Mm. So I take a, a lot of that very, very hands on mm -hmm. and trying to communicate with them as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I, it's interesting because I do think my, my parenting skills is a lot different than my dad. Mm. Well, my How dad so? was was very much in like I feel like he he really allowed me a lot of room to figure stuff out on my own, but yet wasn't too far away in case I just didn't so I didn't get too lost at it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I give my kids as much space for that, but they're ten, eight, and four right now. Right, so maybe right. you know maybe As that older, that, maybe. that part of that witness maybe that that'll be there, but. I mean, you know, it might not be that much in style, I mean, but I learned a lot from the Cosby show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of lessons from Cliff Huxtable. Right, right. And right. um and just try to be hands-on, man. Like for me, I'm I'm very open to if there's a level of, of lesson, mm -hmm. a level of encouragement that I can provide. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe, man, that I mean parenting is easy under uh, outside of two circumstances. It's easy. Uh, unless you have something you're trying to get the kids to do mm -hmm. or 
you're trying to get them not to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, it's fairly easy. You know, so it's mean? the motivation part. You think, like trying to get them to do things or not do things. I think that's. You know, the- I think it's just the balance. For me, for me, if anything, if anything, it's the balancing act of it all. Like how balancing mm-hmm. time with each one, um, putting that input in. Uh, like for me, I. I'll tell you, I'm a songwriter and my lessons in songwriting have worked very well in songwriting and I'm trying to apply it in parenthood. And I'll tell you that in what way. Mm. I'm very much, um, I follow this, this, this phrase called process over product. Mm. And, it's, and it's something that's helped me out in my life as a whole of really being in tune in the process of what we're doing and not really being too concerned with the outcome of it. You know, oftentimes you'll be so worried about the outcome that you'll, you'll, you won't really appreciate or put the time in the steps that it would take to get to the output, right? So while writing a song, I can't worry about is the song going to win Grammys or is it going to be the biggest song or is, or is the song better than the last song I just wrote, right? I can only just be as connected as I possibly can to the moment, to the song, to the special parts of it. And if I dedicate myself to it, However it's going to turn out, I want, first of all, I realized that how it's going to turn out is really out of my hands, right? Mm-hmm. I'll just find the answer faster and in a truer sense if I invest into it, right? And not right. be so concerned. But but trying to win a Grammy and sitting there at the piano and going, I'm trying to win a Grammy is not going to win you a Grammy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how do you apply that to, to parenting? I can't, I can't necessarily parent my kids worrying about if they're going to be doctors or lawyers or follow my footsteps and musicians, you know, really, I got to invest in who they are right now and just put as much I can into them and whoever they're going to become or whoever they're going to turn out, that's in God's hands. And I think they'll be better off if I take a minute and if I take that time to really be connected in the process of it, you know, and, 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 and I'll tell you, um, a couple of years ago, man, I, I had this realization where I was, you know, I built my studio here for my kids to be in the studio with me. Like I built it like with space for them to be able to, they want to ride a scooter in there. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you know, whatever they want to do, they want to sit there and watch TV while I'm working. It's all, it's all set up. And so I'm, I'm fine being around my kids all day, every day. But I had this realization of like, Having your kids around all day is one thing, but are you investing in them? Hmm. Like taking an interest. So my kids were, my kids have been around me and I'm like this. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I'm like writing or I'm like, you know, planning. And, it, and that's still gonna be a lot of that because I'm, I, you know, it just is what it is. But how often do you turn the computer off? How often do you get on the ground with them? You know, get with their Matchbox cars or their Avengers games or how much you pick up their Nintendo and, and say, all right, what you working on? Let me see what you're doing. And I think that was a couple of years ago. I realized like I'm really good at having them around, including them in in my world. But like, how much am I investing in their world? And I think that was a big change for me a couple of a couple of years ago. That's been really really helpful. Good and parent over the music. Good and parent <laughs> right, over the music. <laughs> that, that, that was me. That was me for sure. <laughs> I love sure. what you said though too about the process over the product because that's just so succinct yeah. and perfect because you know you know with what my son he's 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 in college now he's studying graphic design originally he wanted to do culinary arts it was he was like I want to cook I want to be a chef I wanna, da, da. we went up to we drove up to Rhode Island to um one of the schools I forget the name now and did a whole tour and then we let him go to a cooking camp one summer in the city here. I spent a week learning how to make sushi and just all this other stuff. And at the end of the week, he was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, like not as a profession. He still likes to cook as a hobby, but he was like, mm, I don't know. But it, it's, it's giving them that that space, you know, to learn yeah. and change their mind is such a big part of it because you can't push them into, because I tried that. I, he has such a sharp mind. Both my kids are so bright. And early on when he was maybe around Max's age, he had taken to, he, to Pokemon in a way that was next level. He was making up Pokemon battles based on 
the attributes of the different Pokemon, but he was writing them mm. down in this book. Mm. And he would say, well, this Pokemon is fire and this one has this. And if you put them together, I said, you're a walking chemist. Do you realize this? And he was just like, he just looking at me with his little eyes like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I tried to buy him these, you know, preschool chemistry books with illustrations of different elements and saying, hey, if you think if you treat the elements like Pokemon, you can manipulate them in the same way. And he was just like, mm, OK, if you say so, it didn't take. But I was trying to cultivate and push him in a in a direction that he just wasn't trying yeah. to go. And you can't I had to learn that, you know, you have to let them do their own thing and and not impose your own will on the, yeah. on, the on the outcome. So I, yeah. I really dig what you said about that. Um, I was reading the names and I'm like, if there isn't a, if, if Max Roberson isn't a musician's name, I don't know what is. How did you, how did you go about picking the names for the boys? Uh, Rock was easy. Rock, I named Rock. And so, the, uh, so Rock's middle name is Dallas. And that's the middle name of my dad and my grandfather. So my, they were James Dallas Roberson, senior and junior. Um, and Rock was really easy. I always wanted to name my my first son Rock because, uh, or my first ch child, which if it was a boy, because he's the foundation of the family. Like we, me and my wife were a couple, and when we had Rock, we he became we became a family, you know. So he's the foundation of like of of, of what we of what we're building, you know. And uh, so I just and I just love the name, and I loved uh, like he didn't need to be like six seven, you know. 270 <laughs> you, you can meet you know this this sweet kid it's like mm -hmm. uh, and i remember my parents were like don't name your kid rock what no and i was like no we're gonna name i think that's it we're gonna name rock now everybody loves the name like you may you hear rock you in the supermarket rock. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's just they love it and then uh my wife named Ryder. um we just kind of went through names uh, I, don't, I don't know what the rhyme or reason was we, I think we just liked Ryder, like the name, and it and it fits. So he's he's not Ryder Dallas. He's Ryder Blake. Uh, uh -huh. um, we named him Ryder Blake, and then Max, which is interesting. I'm a I'm a real big George Duke fan, mm. and uh, initially I wanted to name Max Duke. Mm. So so uh, um, and we were we were going to name him Ryan, but then a friend of ours named their daughter Ryan. We were like, okay, maybe we won't use Ryan. And we just couldn't think of any R names. We we're like, ah, nothing else felt right. He's in the hospital. His name is Duke. Like literally, like his name is Duke. We about to leave, and at the last second, my wife said, "I'm not satisfied with Duke. I don't want to name him Duke." At the last wow. second, and wow. I think it was more like uh, like David Duke and stuff like that. I think, oh wow, wow, I think wow. She, that, she just couldn't get past that. She was like, you know, and. I think Trump's in office now. It was like, it was like, it was like <laughs> she was like, eh, I, I don't know. No, he wasn't in office, but he was he was running, he was running for, for president at the time. Right. And um so I was like, all right, cool. Well, well, the second option we had was between Max. Uh so we said, let's let's go, let's go with Max. And go, so he's Max Dallas as well. So we use Dallas again. Right. And uh yeah, I mean it's just I think it's just the names. We just thought of these impactful names that it kind of stuck out to us. Now, what I'll tell you is that 90% of the time I call Max Ryder, I call Ryder Max, I call Rock Ryder. I, I probably, on the third try or third or second try, I usually call them by the right name. So, so they're all Rock, they're all Max, they're all Ryder in my book, you know what I mean? You're not alone. We do that with my 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 sister and my daughter. We confused it, we mix their names up all the time. I'd be like, Chrissy, no, Sprint. They're they're very they're alike personality no, wise. So, so you know, we always do that. What what are they like? You mentioned earlier, you know, that the the two older ones are kind of closer in um, as far as what they like to do together. But what are their personalities like? Are they do they take after mom more or after dad, or are they their own their own person? That's a good question. I think Rock, the oldest, takes after me and temperament. Uh, he reminds me a lot of my wife in a lot of ways. He takes after me in, in temperament, just really, really um, thoughtful kid, really thoughtful. Uh, Ryder is super affectionate, but he's the feisty one. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, 
he's the one he, he got he got my wife's temperament <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. and he's the one who probably looks most like look most like me mm -hmm. um but yeah he, he's probably but in the same time all of them can sing all of them are pretty artistic rock mm -hmm. can rock can really sing oh nice and um and Ryder is it's funny of you saying like with your son Ryder just two weeks ago he takes drum lessons Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, in the middle of drum drum lessons, while in drum lessons, he's like, "Dad, I want to take piano lessons now." And he's like, "Okay, let's let we'll switch." Luckily, the drum the drum teacher teaches piano as well, so it, it wasn't that hard of a switch. Um, but he's he's the artistic one, constantly drawing. Like the, at that age, I, I was probably that's that was me all day. Like I just yep. drew all day. Right. Max is kind of. All, all of them, like just the, uh, he runs the house, you know? <laughs> and he remind I think he reminds me in a way of that, of like, he's watching what his brothers are doing. And so his brother takes drum lessons. If I had, if I would put money on it, Max would be the drummer. Mm -hmm. Cause Max is sitting there watching him in drum lessons. He's like, okay. You know, and I, and I was me, like my, my sister was the one who took piano lessons. My sister was the one who was in a band. Mm -hmm. She was the one who did all the art stuff, really. And I was just a little brother following her. I had to go. I had to go to her piano lessons because she was the older sister. And, you know, mm -hmm. she was watching me at the time. Mm -hmm. So I think I see. I see the trajectory of what he's learning. He's learning two ways. Right. Uh, hands on experience and then learning what is passed down from his from his brothers. So but they're all, all equal individuals, man. They. They uh, there's some there's some good kids though, man. You know, we, we were really fortunate with. Now, when they 13, 14 start smelling themselves, we have another conversation. <laughs> yes, you know I mean? so we'll have to do part two when that happens, brother. You, yeah. You're in for something. Something. Oh, I, I already know. <laughs> I, I know. I know. When I was 13, 14 years old, so I know. So I'm like, oh, get ready. And my wife has no idea what's in store for her. Oh man. So they. They spend time with you in the studio. They know what daddy does. What do they think of daddy's music? They uh, they like it. I mean, there's more challenges now. At one point, they 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 you know they, it was that was that was everything for them. It was, that was it, right? Uh, that's all they wanted to listen to. That's all they wanted to watch. That's all they wanted to whatever. And I think as they get older, they start learning about other music, other things. Uh, I mean, Rock is a, a full time radio station now, I and mean, he knows every song that's out. He could probably tell you the top 10 songs on billboard and sing them from top to bottom. But, um, but at the same time, you know, those, they're still my A&Rs. So, oh, yeah. Just so like, if I, if I finish a song and play it and then next, my, my, my bar is, is one of them. Will I hear one of them sing it in the next 48 hours? If, I, if they do that, I know I got something. I'm starting you to know. hear scratching a little bit. Oh, it's probably, I'm starting to, I'm, I'm probably, yeah, well, I'll, just, I'll just hold, I'll hold it. So, you okay. hear now? It's good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, so you so, know what they're singing at then. Yeah, and the next morning sitting at Pancakes, he's like, I want to tell you. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, you know. Now I know because it, then it kind of it, is catchy. And even in my teaching, I, I, when, I, when I'm when i teaching songwriting, you know, a lot of times I'll tell the, um, I'll tell the student, I say, would my eight-year-old sing this tomorrow? Mm. You no. Know? I want you. To, I want you to. I want it to be int intricate. I want it to be re revealing. Right. But it gotta be catchy enough that that eight year old tomorrow while he's sitting out eating pancakes, right. he's like, "I'm thinking of you." I'm thinking. You know, I'll, I'll. I need to hear him sing it, and I know <laughs> at that point I know it's sticky. That's what we call. It. We like, is it sticky? Is it's it gonna sticky? Stick? That song stick to you. So that that's that's that that's my bar. You know what I mean? But they not. Let me say this though. They ain't sitting in the studio with me like they used to. Oh yeah. Oh, they used to live in the studio with me. Now they they gonna come to pop your head in. So she's working on. All right, cool. You know, but you know it's funny because there's so much gadgets here. I got a green screen for virtual stuff. They got a full studio, and I think there's gonna be a moment where they're gonna wake up and go, "Wow, we got all these tools here." Mm -hmm. You know, and it's here. Like if they wanted, to, if they wanted to jam out. I mean, if uh, Max cut a song. Uh, about six months ago, it's, it's banging. He got on a drum yeah. machine, laid the drums. I hit record, said, all right, play it. And he plays in drums. Then I play a little bit of keys, and he sung to it. And uh, it's nice. It's nice. But but guess what? They, they could do that every day if they wanted to. That's but at true. the same time, it's not, it's not like really going to force them. The goal is whenever they're ready to do it, whenever they want to learn, 
Right. Um, it's there for him, you know, it's there for him. So we'll see. So you got this song, brother, called Leave It In. And I'm like, is this how you got the three kids, brother? <laughs> well, technically, yes, technically, no, right? Because. The leave, leaving it is sure it's a play with words, and if anyone wants <laughs> to think of it in, a, in in that way, you you definitely can. But <laughs> but really, you know, the song is about, um, every, you know, there were plenty of times where, like before I met my wife, because us fellas we get hurt at times mm -hmm. that we could be sitting next to our future, but I didn't bring my heart with me today. Mm -hmm. I'm not even I'm not even a place to love. I'm not a place to love. So I went on dates. I really, you know, really show revealed myself to 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 a woman, but truth be told, I wasn't there. I was my heart wasn't there. I wasn't vested. So the song is really when you really like when you listen, when you look, get past the shock value, what it's really <laughs> saying is tonight I'm gonna leave it in my heart. I'm gonna leave my heart in it here you know what i mean because i think you got potential and i need to i need to see what where this where this may lead you know um so i'm willing to try i'm willing to leave my leave my heart because at times before i, I it, it wasn't here it wasn't here so that's so really it, uh it is your heart okay got it yeah 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 that's the <laughs> you, know, you know most people ain't most people ain't listen that deep they just take it from what you know what i mean and that's cool. Right? Listen, man. That's that's what that's what songwriting is. That's what that's what we're gonna do. It's, it's supposed to it's supposed to create a conversation. Yeah, that song has created some conversation. Let's just say that for sure. So, <laughs> of your catalog, which song you can name more than one? Which song do you think is most responsible for population growth? Oh wow! I mean, I think "Softest Lips" is up there. Mm. Uh, "Softest Lips." was really a game changer. I just kissed the softest lips that God has ever made. And I am so in love with the girl to hold these lips again. But then you have songs like Obstacles that um that though it's not like a it's not a sensual song. Mm -hmm. But it's a song about um that tension, the tension of like uh, is love going to be here? Love going to work out? And truth be told, I think you might have more people making love to the, to those type of songs, the, the, mm -hmm. those those ballads that have tension to it more than the "Let me rub your feet, babe." You right, know what I mean? Right, it's like right, there's right, times right. for "Let me rub your feet" stuff too. Um, but I don't know, man. I'm, I tell what I tell you is that. I got a whole bunch of baby pictures over here, man. People come to shows and say, "You, you responsible for our kids?" I'm like, "Oh, that, all right, cool." You know, uh, wow. They just don't, just don't send me, don't serve me no papers. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> we are right, going to serve. Give me the kids pictures. I love that. Right, but no, um, no receipts, you know, no bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no receipts, no bills. I, yeah, but you know, I mean, I, I, you know, it's crazy to think about. Uh, that people listen to your music that way. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I'm I'm just now graduating to um, thriving level, a recognizing thriving level. Mm. You know, like like there were times where uh, songs have have changed my life or healed me. Right, like. Like got me out of a dark period, and I know how how important those songs were to me. How much they changed my life. I remember listening to uh, Omar from London. He had a song called "Little Boy." And I promise you, man. After hearing that song, it changed me. I, I couldn't I couldn't view women like I did sometimes. You know what I mean? I felt like that song was talking directly to me, right, and I couldn't right. be the same person after that song. And it's a and guess what? A three minute song. It changed. Literally was like, and to think that I could possibly have written a song that that would that has or would do that for someone else, it, it, it was a, it was hard for my mind for me to wrap my mind around that. Mm. You know, I almost almost would sh like start shaking just at the thought of it. 
the magnitude because I know how important that song was or how, how important certain songs were to me that I could possibly be that important to somebody else. I just couldn't wrap my mind around it because I was so focused on surviving, mm-hmm. you know, surviving in the game and surviving that I had probably graduated out of surviving for a long time ago. I haven't even had to worry about my career that much. Right. But at no point was I really taking it in, you know, where we were. So the fact that people have had kids to, or, or, or mended marriages, I, I, I'll tell you a, a funny story. This happened a long time ago. I mm-hmm. was in Tennessee. I was signing CDs after a show. And this big dude, man, he had to be like 6'4", 320. Like serious dude. Walked straight up past the whole line, cut everybody, right? And just walked up, like just, and just started talking. I'm mm-hmm. signing a CD and everything. He, he just oblivious to what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And he comes up and he, he's like, uh, and, and, you know, he's so big. We saw him coming. Like, whoa, right? Ain't nobody like, you cut in line. Everybody just, you know, they just <laughs> let him do it. And he said, uh, hey, man, you know, me and my wife were getting a divorce, and I've been blaming her for everything. I, I'm, I'm constantly pointing out her errors and what she not doing and what she need to do better and just what I deserve, what I need, man. And he's able to sit here watching your concert. And he was real adamant, man. I thought he was going to punch me in the face. That's how he was talking to me. Like, like, you know what I mean? That's how he talk. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, well, watching your show, man. It showed me what I wasn't doing. It was showing me what I where I was wrong. It showed me that this ain't just some one sided thing, man. So I'm just letting you know that I'm gonna go find my wife right now. I'm gonna ask her to take me back, man. I want to call the divorce off. I'm gonna ask. I'm leaving from right here to go tell her. And he turned off and beeline right out the place, and everybody was just standing there looking like that was crazy, you know, brother. But, t- you have that power. I told you yeah, when a, I, the headline for the, audit, the interview we did, I said, Eric Roberson celebrates 10 years of telling men's business. You have this <laughs> way of just tapping in to emotions that we didn't want to acknowledge ourselves. Like I was thinking about the song you did, Omari Hardwick. And um, mm. man, just the love feeling, withdrawal. Yeah. Love's withdrawal. Oh my God. Like, yeah. man, it's ever. If you've ever been apart from your woman, broken up with your woman, just been at odds in any way, and you just miss her, that song, and then his 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 poem at the oh, end of that. Amazing. amazing. Brother, brother, amazing. brother. Well, like, you know, B- Bill Withers said, um, there's no difference between a male song and a female song. The only mm-hmm. difference is the male ego. Right. So when you remove the ego, man, at the end of the day, man, we all want love. We all been hurt. You know what I'm saying? We all miss somebody at some time. Yep. And sometimes our ego doesn't doesn't allow allow us to admit that. Yeah. Allow us to see that. But at the end of the day, man, it's there, man. And, and I mean, I, I I try to write from a real truthful place. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I appreciate the fact that people can relate to it sometimes. So you had a um, song last year, Cancel 2020. And the yeah. second verse, you said, I had a talk with my, excuse me, I had a, the lyrics written down. I had here. a talk with my dad and he, mm-hmm. and he cried this morning. Don't get to hear that side of him often. And I can't imagine what this whole year cost him. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, and, and that was true. That was exactly how that went. You what know, you, we mm-hmm. talk to so me about I, that. Yeah. So I wrote that song the night that Chad Bozeman passed. Mm. Um, and like everybody in, throughout the whole world, I was I was devastated. I was sad. I didn't know, though. I think most of uh, most of the Howard Association and people that went to school with him and mm. so like that. I don't think any of us knew. So I was just so caught off guard, right? And I held a good front for till my kids went to bed. And knowing how I do, my my escape in those moments when I feel like that is is to go to music. So my wife probably knew the first first break, the first moment I knew the dishes were washed or whatever. She knew the first thing I was doing was going downstairs. Right. And um, and Jazzy Jeff had just sent me that track. And what did he? I think he might have called it like cancel culture or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I actually wrote another song before <clears throat> that night, just writing. And then I pulled that one up and it was like, I just didn't want to stop writing. I didn't want to stop recording. So I wrote half of it that night and I posted it. And of course it went crazy. I like just half the song. Right. 
Right. So then the next day, me and Jeff were talking about finishing the song. Um, and of course, people were calling me about memorial services. Howard University was doing a memorial service for, for Chad and Bowman. Of course, there's a lot of crying. There's a lot of just a tough morning. Right. And my dad called me. And while we were talking, I think we were talking about the memorial service that, that Howard was planning. And, and my dad started crying, man. Dad started mm-hmm. crying on the phone just about the impact of just what's going on and stuff like that. It was a beautiful, real heartfelt moment. And uh, I was good. I was really just going to do, we were just going to stop there. We thought the song had already won and got its point across. So I was just going to add some like oohs and ahs and just end the song. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went down there and press record. And, and, and what you heard was what I said. I, said, I had to talk to my dad this morning. I had to talk to my dad and he cried this morning. What's, you know, what's your relationship like with your dad overall? Is that something indicative of your relationship that you do that happens? Oh man, we we really close, man. man mm-hmm. You know, that's that's, that's my, my parents uh, right with my wife. That's my that's my best friends. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, we had some great conversations, and my dad is very truthful and vulnerable, man. He he not gonna hold back. You know, he, he can hold back his tongue. He can hold back his tears. You know. Um, and I think as we as we both gotten older, those conversations are even more genuine. And uh, and I've seen some amazing things with with, with with my dad. Just when my when his dad, my grandfather, passed, and just through that last ten years of uh, my grandfather's body kind of breaking down, and just seeing uh, how my dad took care of him, and just the reverse, like the reverse of of, of parenting was was a valuable lesson. Yeah. Um, but man, you know, so whenever you, if you listen to my catalog, there's probably at least six times where I say a wise man, a wise man once said, and, he, and when I say wise man, I'm either talking about my grandfather or I'm talking about my dad, either one. Right. You know, right. uh, uh, when I say like shake your hand, there's a song I got called Shake Your Hand. Yeah. Wise man once said, shake your hand and walk away. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what my grandfather told me. He's like, he's like, man, sometimes you can't afford can't afford to hug nobody. <laughs> I said, man, shake her hand and walk away. I said, I got you, pops. I got you. You ain't got to tell me twice. Oh, man, that man, that man gave me so many songs. I, I can't even. I can't. Uh, t- I can't even front, man. Like just sitting. We, he lived in North Carolina, in a, in a little, little small house on a dirt road. Of course, eventually got paid, but we grew up on it. We'd be in a dirt road house, and. Um, and he was sitting on that front porch, man, and just be dropping bombs. It'd be so heavy that when you left, you could only retain the last thing he said. Right. Because almost every line was so powerful, but you had to let go of that line to grab the next line. Wow. He was just, uh, just a wise dude, man. Really, really slick. Really. Uh, and I, I so clearly where I get my songwriting from, because I see I, he would like sit and he, and he would like light up. He would say something. The grandfather, yeah, and he would kind of chill for a minute. And he light up. He say something, and you see him processing it right there, right there in front of you. And whatever came out of his mouth, you'd be like, <laughs> like you know, he he had it, man. I mean, he had it for real, for real, had it. You know, you know where so. I felt that energy, that that old sage wisdom was on um, Tigolero, and um, I think it was never the same smile. Oh, beautiful song! Yeah. Oh my God! Like yeah. you, unless you've been near that, that mm-hmm. song doesn't really connect. But when exactly. I've had conversations with people, and like, and it's it's it, it was just like whoa! It just hit me like, yeah. You no, know, she'll forgive you, but it's never going to be the same. Yeah, it's yeah. never going to be that smile that you know that yeah. you knew before. And you know, uh, Fonte wrote that song. That just goes to show me he's such a great songwriter. Mm-hmm. I remember when he played it for me. I was like, "Are you serious, man?" But I mean, that's that's that vulnerability that that you yeah. that you that you try to write to. I mean, writing is about revealing. You mm-hmm. got to reveal something, man. You got to reveal. It doesn't it doesn't always have to be negative or tough, but you still got to reveal something, you know. Right. And that song, that song shined a light on an area that. It's rarely talked about. I said, mm-hmm. yeah, she may smile again, but it ain't never going to be the same smile. You know, because usually when you talk about infidelity, you hear either one, one, usually she left you. And yeah. you're just trying to pick up the pieces of, oh, yeah. shit, she's gone. Yeah. But what happens when she decides to stay, but 
things mm. never quite the same, which happens more often than not, mm-hmm. but no one really talks about it. Um, that that's was, the, that's, that the, was that's the brilliance of Fonte, man. <laughs> that's the brilliance of, brilliance of Fonte. Word. You know? um, you're, you're, do you feel like your relationship with your father grew or changed when you had kids yourself? Like, and what I'm assuming it did. In what ways do you think your relationship with your father changed once you became a father? Well, I think a lot of it just one in seeing the role for him change too. Like seeing him be such a great grandfather. And, he, and mind you, I have an older sister and she has three boys. Mm-hmm. So I watched, I already watched that. So I knew that we were going to graduate to that place as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, it, it means a lot, man. When you, when you see somebody, whew, I don't have me crying over here. I uh, love something you love. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, man, it's like powerful, man. It's like, you know, I love him, but I really love them. And to see him really love them makes me love him more. Mm. You know what I mean? And the same thing for mm. my for my mom, too, man. It's like, man, they, they, man they'll, t- they'll give an arm for these kids, you know? Mm. So it's like just seeing that uh, had us have even more in common. So it brought us tight. We were already tight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but that like, uh, you know, seeing them light up more than I ever saw them light up before. Mm. You know, they lit up more, right? So it's like, um, so yeah, it's 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 a it's a beautiful thing, man. Like so, we we've, we've always been close, and I think more of uh, I'm able to have a more in depth conversation with them because I've upgraded to where they are. Mm. I now know what kind of love that they were speaking about, mm. you know what I mean? Before I, I mean, they always know that kind of love. I, I'm now getting to that point where I know what kind of love that is. So it's, it's probably more the fact that I'm, that I'm now matured enough to, uh, to understand that level that, mm. that, that they had level of sacrifice. I mean, I, when I look back at how much my dad sacrificed, yes, you know what I mean? To make sure that, uh, we had everything that we wanted or we could try everything we wanted. And my mom too, man, like just the valuable lessons. I always tell her when my, my mom quit corporate America and started her own business, I think my freshman year in high school, mm-hmm. there's no accidents. My sister owns her own business and, and, and she's an art, she's an interior decorator. It's no, no surprise that I own my own company. And, uh, you know, even going down the road, like, Oh, I'm gonna go independent. Like, you know, it's like, rebelling and following your heart. I watched my mom quit like the success everyone thought she should have to follow her passion. Yeah. And whether she did that to show me a lesson or just let me see it. And the other valuable part of that man was my dad had this Lincoln white, maybe blue rag top. Gorgeous, man. You know, and mind you, I'm a freshman. I'm thinking I got like three year, three more years. I'm in that bad boy. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm already, I'm already seeing myself drive. It was bad. <laughs> Lincoln Mach Seven. And I think the day my mom comes home and and says, I, I don't want to do this no more. She was working at AT&T. She said, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm retiring for AT&T. I want to start my own business. Mm. The next day, my dad puts a for sale sign on that Lincoln. The next day, like it sold that day. And he went and bought this van so he could transport my mom's clothes around. You know what I'm saying? And that's the part, like that's the lesson. Like, you know what I mean? So so now, you know, I'm 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 always like, what's the gray van for my wife now? You know what I mean? What's the what's the gray van? Like, you know what I mean? So it's like I, I get it. That there were two powerful lessons in there. My mom willing to risk everything to follow her passion. And knowing that even through following passion, she's going to take care of her responsibilities and our, our, our kids, as well as uh, my young uh, cousins, her nieces and nephews um, as well. And then my dad supporting her, mm. like really, really like sacrificing, like giving, giving away his baby. Like that car was my dad's baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He, he didn't even hesitate. He didn't, I can't. I, this car makes no use. It does not help me help her. Is gone, and it was like, you know, every day I try to be those two examples. Oh my god, that's you know love. That's, that's yeah, love. Man. Yeah. So, um, one of the last things 
raising one black boy in America is already hard enough. Oof, yeah. You got three. Yeah. And I know they're still young, but have you begun to have those harder conversations, at least maybe with your eldest, about the world, the, the, the politics, the, the police, everything that comes with raising a black boy? Yeah, especially Rock, because uh, he he can handle it a little more, and he had he's it really because he came to us with questions. Okay, he said, you know, why are they saying this about the police? I thought police were good. I said, well, mm-hmm. most police are good. Some, you know, but some are going to be bad, and you got to be mindful of that. And, you know, um, so so one thing was for sure that if he came to me with a question, what he wasn't going to get was a lie. Mm-hmm. You know, and as much as we can have the kids prepared, um. You know, we will, but then there's that scary roll of dice part, man, you know? And you probably like me, we, man, we are blessed, man. Mm-hmm. How many times I was in a car and my friend had crack on him or had a gun on him, mm-hmm. you know? And my whole life would have just been totally different. Not that I had crack or a gun on me, but, it, right. you know? By association. Yeah, by yeah. association or, or however that pull, that time that cop pulled us over, how they all would have turned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I've had, I've had two guns pulled on me in my lifetime, both by police officers, you know, one by a group of white cops and the second one by, by, by a black cop later when I was in college, mm-hmm. you know, so there's a fear aspect in that. And as much as I can have, much as I can have them prepared, uh, I'll try to have them prepared, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, we, we're, 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 we're having those conversations. It's been a, a really revealing year and a half when you think of it uh with uh, it was so much police shootings and brutality was leading up before COVID, right and then now we're here and like there's no escaping all the news so you right. kind of got you know, you know you can't fake but so much <laughs> you know at some point you just got to tell them all right this this is what it is man right you know so uh they know that they, they know that they're young black men that they they should be proud of their heritage they know the history Mm-hmm. Um, but they know that uh, this world, it, it, we're trying to work towards it being better, you know, mm-hmm. and we start by bettering ourselves first and foremost. And, uh, but yeah, we, we trying to, we're trying to raise some woke kids. <laughs> woke can. baby. Shout out Felonious <laughs> Monk, my boy. Felonious. <laughs> oh, like, man. Woke hashtag babies. woke baby. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you got to. Yeah. So speaking of woke, um, you have some new music coming in, in it shortly. Yeah, yeah. So another song that we did last year that really uh, was impactful. We did a song called Lessons mm-hmm. that um I wrote I wrote the night of my the the morning of my anniversary. Nice. Um and it was it was like three o'clock in the morning, you know, so now it's officially my anniversary and I don't think I was really trying to like let me write this anniversary song, but I think I just was thinking about it. You know, it's the world is quiet. And uh, and I wrote this song, uh, and it really, you know, just a little bit of I leaked out. People went crazy over it. So now we're officially rolling that song out. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those songs that just more of like, you know, every everything that everything that happened in life had to happen for me to have what I have right now. You know, just even you know, and just how hard it is for pregnancies. Just the if I went to a store and bought a Pepsi instead of a Coke, I probably wouldn't have the kids I have right now. Wow. If the smallest thing happened in, in college differently, the smallest thing happened, whatever, I might not have met, never met my wife. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like everything, every brick wall I ran into, every heartbreak, every setback, everything had to happen. Every blessing, every reward for me to have those three in that room. So I, so I, I thank God for every step of it. Mm. You know, even no matter how painful, no matter how dark it was at some point, because it got me here. You know, and uh, so so that that's kind of what the song, the the song is is about. It's about the lessons, you know, the valuable lesson in that. Beautiful. Yeah. If if there's one fatherhood lesson you could leave us with, what would it be? Who fatherhood lesson? <laughs> I tell you, all right. So I don't know. If this is, I don't know how much of a lesson this did, but I'll tell you. It's, it's uh, this is what comes to mind. Mm. My wife is pregnant with rock my first son Mm -hmm. we're doing soul village and someone steals my laptop from Mm -hmm. the dressing room of soul village damn remember i told you my wife is throwing up she's really really sick we we live two hours from new york 
I drive home, live it. Oh, I'm so pissed. Somebody stole my laptop during Soul Village. I come home, it's like one o'clock in the morning. I come upstairs, she's awake. I was so village. Somebody stole my laptop. Somebody stole your laptop. Ah, she throws all up all over the place. All over the place. I mean, bed, side of the floor. Oh, man. Oh, snap. Okay. They take the comforter off. Yo, you go clean yourself up. She going to the bathroom, start cleaning stuff up. I'm, I'm cleaning everything up. Getting the stuff off the floor. You know, spraying the carpet spray. You know, wiping everything. Doing everything. Get everything cleaned up. All right. What, you need something? She said, uh, she said if you, uh, you, can you just give me some bread? Give me some bread. My stomach is it's just not. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I go downstairs. I make us some toast, an English muffin. We had some old Outback bread. I heat that up, put some butter on. I mean, I give her a array because I know I'll make sure I'm not coming back downstairs. I want to give her all this stuff. Right. While I'm down there now, I'm thinking I'm getting mad again. Like, oh, my God. Oh, that song was on the laptop. Oh, I didn't have that backed up. Oh, and that's when I'm getting mad again. Mm. So now I'm coming upstairs with this plate. I'm living, right? So I give it to her and I'm patient because I'm trying to be a good husband. And and she eats it. And just when she finishes all the bread, she goes, wow, so somebody stole your laptop? And I say, yeah. And I start talking about it. Blah! She throws up all over the place again. This time the, the, the dresser's open. She hit the inside of the dresser, caught all that stuff in it. Just wow. a mess. You know what the lesson was? None of that stuff mattered. Only thing that mattered was that kid in her stomach, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The laptop right. wasn't important. Right. All, all the stuff. And that was the thing. It was like, that was my first, the first lesson of like, man, you still tripping about all that stuff, man. Mm-hmm. If you don't take care, if you don't take care of that little, that little baby inside her belly. Right. And that's been, the, that's been a lesson ever since, man. Like uh-huh. real talk. And nothing else matters, man. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff is just material. We get, we'll get it back. We'll get all the stuff. The focus is on them. Poetic, prophetic, <laughs> all the beautiful things. Eric Roberson, man, thank you so much, brother. This uh, is thank you, man. an amazing, wonderful conversation. Everybody go check out Eric Roberson music to get everything Eric Roberson. And, you know, good luck to you, the wife, the, the beautiful kids. And, Appreciate you know, it. looking forward to everything you've got coming, brother. And let's hope the 2021 is it's a little better than 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hope a lot better. Amen. A lot better. I'm, I'm trying to manage my expectations. You know, I'm not going to yeah. ask for too much, but you know, yeah, I, I think we're it. we're starting out on a better foot. Let's let's just keep that momentum going. I'll take it. I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. Great talking with you, man. Looks like talking to you again. Yes. All and, right. Uh, all right, take man. Care. Be safe. Peace. If you're enjoying Fathers Who Bother, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at Fathers Who Bother and Twitter at Fathers Who Be.